Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be finally doing my review on the Jeffree Star Cosmetics and Shane Dawson Conspiracy Palette collaboration. I've been hemming and hawing about doing this review for you guys and I finally just decided to sit down and do it. So if you want to hear my thoughts on this palette and see two tutorials on some stunning looks, if I do say so myself, then just keep watching. Oh my gosh. So every time I do a Jeffree Star review, the craziest people spend time in my comment section. I get the meanest <laughs> comments from his followers when I say something negative about his products. Like if you go to my Jeffree Star and Morphe collaboration video, I mean honestly that palette was horrible and I just got the meanest comments about me not liking it. It was <laughs> and people like still to this very day comment mean things to me on that video. So I'm going to get mean comments for that comment that I just made, but that's okay. It's a little bit entertaining, I'm not gonna lie. So anyways, let's get into the actual palette and why I purchased it. So I purchased the bundle from Beautylish. So I got the Conspiracy palette and the Mini Controversy. Now I didn't use the Mini Controversy for this review. I have not yet tried it, but I did swatch it for you guys. So when we get into swatches, you'll see that. But this is what we're talking about today. I always recommend that you order from Beautylish when you order Jeffree Star because his launches are so crazy especially this one I didn't order it I was at work I gave my mom the job of ordering it and she hated me because apparently it was this big blah, blah, blah. Uh, but Beautylish did make it a little bit easier and Beautylish is shipping wonderful my cousin she ordered from the Jeffree Star website and she literally got her stuff the whole bundle yesterday so Beautylish is the way to go and by the way the bundle for this and this was $72 it is sold out right now but of course it will be restocked because these are permanent products to his line so I promise you down the road you will be able to get your hands on it if you could not the conspiracy palette alone is $52 and the mini controversy palette it actually is a lot easier to get they made a large stock of this that hasn't gone out of sale like when i went to morphe last week this was still available not the big one though but yeah these are the only two things that i purchased from the collection there also was a lip bundle that honestly i did not like the colors for i would just would not wear a single color in that bundle and i wanted it so bad because it had that really cute pig packaging but I couldn't do it. I knew I wasn't going to wear those colors. I do want one of those pig mirrors. The black one especially is attractive to me. I don't have any of the mirrors, but I really like cute animal items. So I like that pig mirror a lot and I like the gloss. I know it's a clear gloss, but it looks pretty. I didn't need any of that though. So not that I needed this palette, but I definitely felt invested in this series. So I did watch that. I don't really watch Jeffree Star too often. I more so am a fan of his brand because I think the products he comes out with are absolutely beautiful. His brand itself isn't really my style, but I love the packaging of everything. I just think he curates very beautiful products that are, like he stated in his series, they're pieces of art. And just as a makeup collector and a makeup enthusiast, I really like his brand for that reason. Everything is just so well thought out that I do find myself purchasing from his brand a lot. Not everything, but I do purchase a lot. I don't really watch Shane Dawson. I don't really keep up with his videos. They're so long. They're like over an hour long. But I did watch this series because of course they went behind the scenes of the makeup industry, which of course is what I am in love with. So it was really fun to watch the series and to see the behind the scenes of making this palette. And of course, super great marketing on their part. Like after you watch the series, of course you have to buy the stuff to go along with it because you feel like you're a part of the process. But I think that the series is very well done. I can't wait for them to finish it up and to watch those episodes. I watched the series, I really liked it. So I bought the palette and of course, the packaging on this is super neat. I'm so glad he decided to go with this packaging. This is definitely the most neat one that they had. So the way that it comes packaged, and of course I did not prepare for it, so it comes laying in this box. This goes lays in here, but I'm using it to hold the products that I wore on my face today. 
And then, let's pretend it's in that box. You have this really neat conspiracy, is this called a unicarton? No, it's a sleeve. In this really neat conspiracy sleeve, and then you pull it out and oh, reveals the palette. It's hard to read the words on top of this spiral. Just so you are aware, these pressed pigments are not eye safe. Cheese dust, sleep paralysis, food videos, my pills, Trisha, not a fact, flaming hot, and pigment are not intended for use around the immediate eye area. They are pressed pigments, so if that is something you are wary of, that's like over half of the colors in here. I'm not really wary of those. I am mindful of pressed glitters, but there aren't any pressed glitters in here, so whatever, stain my eyelids, that's fine. But the packaging is really cool. It's very chunky. If you don't like chunky packaging, this is very, very hard to store because it has this weird elevation here, uh, but it's that trunk style and these latches are really great quality. I think in one of my palettes from him, they get caught, but this one's very smooth for me. And then you have Conspiracy, the Shane Dawson, Austin Jeffree Star logo and it's just it's so cool. I'm not a cool person so I don't feel like I'm worthy to own such a cool palette. But then of course you get a large mirror and here it reveals the shades and in my opinion one of the coolest parts about this palette are each of the different embossments in the colors. That's one of the things that makes Jeffree Star's brand very unique and just a whole experience. Of course it sucks when you start using it and they go away but I'm sure you've by now seen this palette plenty enough it makes you want to vomit but just so well done and really quickly while I'm at it let's talk about the mini controversy like I said I've not put it on my eyes at all but I, if I was getting the big one I was gonna get the little one along with it so here's the unicarton that it comes in just really cool the whole concept and then here is what the packaging looks like on that you have the holographic feature to it it's the mini controversy uh, it's just a cardboard palette but here are the colors it comes with nine shades it's honestly not my favorite kind of color story. It does look like kind of leftover colors popped into a palette if you ask me, but I mean there still is a flow to it, but this isn't a palette that I would bring with me for a weekend because the colors are so kind of odd. I mean you can play like right here to make a look and you can have blue look. It's just, it's it's not an everyday palette for me, let me put it that way. But from what I could swatch, it seemed like this was a very nice palette. I think I've heard mixed reviews. I haven't really watched that many reviews on this one though. I love on my couch. I love that there's a cream color in here. Diet Root Beer is a really neat color. The neutral shades are what I'm gravitating towards. But no, I don't. I can't say too much about this. So we're gonna move that aside and here, let's take a look at the swatches of the Conspiracy palette. Now this swatch, absolutely stunning. Just from swatching, you can really tell that these are good quality eyeshadows. They all swatch absolutely stunning. Some, you could tell, had more pickup than others. There's nothing wrong with kickback. It just kind of determines how you're going to apply your eyeshadow and in what order. I would say if you're playing with the dark colors, you're going to want to leave your face makeup for last. Like the first look that I did with this palette was a deep black smoky eye and I had black all underneath. All of those dark shades, especially the shimmers, I noticed they did have a lot of fallout because they are a little bit more chunky, but in a good way for a shimmer. So that definitely required tapping off of the brush and doing your face makeup second. But for example, this look, I did not need to do my face makeup for. There was no fallout. So that's just something to keep in mind. Another thing that I noticed while swatching and also from application is that the shades that you expect to be really hot and bright, they're really not from swatching. Actually, just kidding. This color is. But from swatching, these colors aren't quite as vibrant as they looked in the pan because these look very... Bam in the palette. That's kind of a good thing because they are more buildable when you put them on the eyes. They're not bad quality. They just aren't as vibrant as they look. But if you do put a white base underneath, you are going to get what you see in the pan. So that's not a problem. You just have to know how to use it. So I do want to take a moment to talk about the color story though. I'm sorry if this is like all over the place. I just have so many thoughts. I gotta be honest. I don't really love the color story. Uh, I just don't. I didn't feel really inspired by this palette. I liked it, but I wasn't 
wowed by it. However, I will say in person it's definitely a lot more pretty and a lot more inspiring than online and through photos. If you aren't super into the palette yet, I do think it helps to see it in person because it, it does look a lot better in person in my opinion. This top row right here of the neutrals, I mean, that's my language. If this palette, let me... I'm sorry if I'm blinding you right now. I'm trying my best not to. But if you just like this, I mean, this speaks to me. And then it's when we get up here where I'm like, nah, these colors don't really talk to me. These colors confuse me and overwhelm me. And then this one right here, again, doesn't really speak to me. Again, just actually though, these look really good together. As separate entities... Wow, those look really good. But as a whole, it left me feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, so that's why I did want to include two tutorials to really show you a couple of looks to hopefully inspire you because I love both of the looks that I came up with with this palette. And then, of course, for every day, just use that top row. So I think it's a really neat color story. It definitely is going to make people step outside of their comfort zone and get a little bit more creative juices flowing potentially. Oh my gosh. I put this necklace aside to wear in my video and then I forgot to put it on. That's better. This is from Bobble Bar, in case you're wondering. Overall, to my eye, this doesn't really attract me, but you can create some really cool looks with this. This palette just contains colors that I'm not super comfortable with, so maybe it's good that it's in here. So it requires me to get comfortable with that kind of stuff. Um, individually, I do want to talk about some shades just from experience from swatching and using on my eyes. There are a few colors that I have not used on my eyes, and I'll be upfront about that. I have not used Trisha or Illuminati, which are Illuminate. Did I really just say Illuminati? Illuminate, which by the way, this is one of the colors I was most excited to use. So I will definitely be using this and the way that it feels really buttery and smooth, this is gonna be a good color, I know. Uh, Trisha does feel a little bit more chunky, a little bit more dry. I'm kind of nervous as to how this will apply to the eye. I think it'll be nice still, but you're gonna wanna use your fingers just based on how it feels. And I'm pretty good at determining the quality of shadows just based on touch. Um, and what's the tea I did use on my eyes today, but just very little. I can't really tell the quality of it. I don't know if it's gonna end up being chalky. So far it doesn't feel chalky but how it applies with a brush is going to be very different. So I can't speak on those three colors too much, but that's just my theory for those three. But as far as the other shades, they all applied fabulous. I really don't have too much bad to say about any of them. The only thing I have to say is spiraling pulls a little bit more matte on the eye, I felt. It's really, really dark, and sleep paralysis is super creamy and crumbly, so you're going to have to use your finger to kind of work it into the skin, which I think is what you're going to have to do with Trisha as well. But other than that, I mean... Ranch is the most stunning highlight shade. It's just a beaming bright white. The mattes here are super buttery. I feel like I needed a really dark chocolate brown in this palette. That's a color that I think was missing to really complete this portion. And so many people, even though you say you're bored of neutral palettes and you want something different, this palette is different, but you know you're gonna go for these colors. You just know it. Yeah, I mean, these shades worked great. The shade was amazing. The shade was a little bit more dull than I was expecting, but it can be built up. Amazing shimmer, really great dark purple. One of the best blacks I've ever used, not even being dramatic. I really like Jeffree Star's formula, generally speaking. I wasn't really too crazy about Blue Blood's formula, but that was because they were blues, and blues just are not good formulas in general. <clears throat> but formulation-wise, this palette is super good. You might need to get used to how to apply a few of the shades, but it's a good palette. It's really pigmented and the colors do what you want them to do. So uh, if the color story speaks to you, this is an awesome palette to pick up. If you were invested into the series and are still kind of hemming and hawing on whether or not it's worth it, personally, I do think it is. I really, really like it and I'm very excited to have it because I feel like even though we had nothing to do with the making of this palette, don't you feel like you <laughs> helped make it? I, I don't no, I just, it's just a really cool palette and it 
it works really good. So before I go into my closing remarks, I do have two tutorials for you. The first one is going to be what I filmed a couple of days ago, my first time ever using the palette on my eyes, a really deep black smoky eye, and then of course it will go into this eye, which is such a stunning look. So let's just get into it. So as you can see, we are going straight for these really dark colors. These are typically some of the more difficult colors to work with. So I just went straight in with the tough colors for my first time playing with this palette. So we're going to start off by taking my pills and we're going to apply that right underneath the eyebrow bone. So just right here, just to set that paint pot so everything runs over it smoothly. And this color complements painterly very well if you're into MAC paint pots. Next, we're gonna head into Tanacon and apply that all over the crease. And then I'm going to be taking Diet Root Beer to deepen that. So these two colors, Tanacon and Diet Root Beer are gonna be probably the most used for mostly everybody. They are kind of traditional transition shades and they're really nice. So Tanacon is blending on really easy, very smooth. Take some Diet Root Beer. Now the formula right away is giving me a lot of kickback in the pan and as you can see from doing this side i have a bunch of black normally i don't have a lot of kickback just because i am light-handed and i always tap my brushes off so if i have fallout this formula just has a lot of fallout that's just how it is which is not a bad thing so now we're just gonna go in for the gusto and we're taking my rides here when i was doing this eye i was going really light-handed tapping off my brush but honestly just kind of go for it as you can see this is an amazing black do you see how pigmented that is really lovely black we're gonna start blending it and for a black as you can see it's working out very well. Also, not to be dramatic, but <laughs> this might be one of the best blacks I've ever used. So I'm focusing that in the outer corner and I am bringing it a little bit onto the lid. It can be a little messy with it, honestly. To add a little bit of texture on my eyelid, I'm taking some of Spiraling and applying that to the center of the lid. So this color applies okay with a brush. I just wanted to show you and like look at all of that fallout. Uh, I don't get much kick up from this in the pan but when you use it with a brush you will so i'm just gonna press that in with my finger like so again you can be messy right now i'm gonna go in and clean that later so next we're gonna go in with sleep paralysis definitely going to use my finger to apply this because it is very soft but oh my goodness you guys this was one of the colors that i was most excited for when you swatch it it's absolutely stunning it is kind of an intimidating color but really pretty because it is quite dark but it's like such a gorgeous scud metal color so now i'm going to take the opportunity to kind of blend everything out and together so just so you know this eye always turns out better than this eye because this eye is always the guinea pig now we're going to take some of a diet cola right here and this is the step that's going to kind of change the whole look so we're going to start off by applying that to the inner corner and then we're actually going to kind of brighten up this entire area so i'm not putting it on the actual lid but i'm putting it over the lid and do you see how that just brightened up the entire look so now we're going to dig into ranch right here first of all i love that the shade is named ranch and so freaking pigmented oh my goodness all right so we're looking a hot mess it's going to come together so i'm going to clean this up put on my face makeup and i'll be back for the lower lash line okay so it's time for the lower lash line so as you can see i added some color because i did want to play with a few more colors so we're starting off with flaming hot and i am coating my brush in this powder and we're gonna work it on the lower lash line leaving just a little bit of space here and i have to say this color is a bit more soft than I was expecting, which I like. I feel like it makes it a little bit easier to work with. And you can always go back and build later. We're gonna take one of the pop colors in this palette food videos. And this one definitely is not as bright as it looks in the pan. However, if you do you want it this bright uh just put it over a white base and then you'll get the neon that's in the pan and it's gonna mix together with the red and kind of create a orangey effect so i'm rebuilding some more of that red and you can blend it out to get super smoky and then we're gonna dig into that original black that we used i'm using like a really defining brush this is the luxie 221 and i'm just gonna line down here 
as if it's eyeliner. So now I'm going to finish the rest of my eye, put on some eyeliner, lashes, and all of that, and I'll be right back. All right, so here's the final look. Obviously, very deep, very vampy. Uh, as far as the colors that I used in today's look, I don't have to complain about anything. There's just fallout, so be aware of that. Make sure you don't do your face makeup first. And then with those brighter colors, they are a little bit more sheer and easy to work with than they appear, so don't be afraid of those. If you do want those to pop, I would definitely recommend putting like either a really sticky or a really white base underneath, and then you'll get the color that's in the pan. But yeah, everything was super easy to work with, that black especially, and not a typical look that I go for, but I really like it. And I used 10 colors in this palette, so I'm impressed with myself for being able to try that many in one look. All right, so I am so excited about what this is going to end up looking like. So we're gonna start off with pigment right here. By the way, everything about that shade is really clever from the name to the design to the color and the print on it. I'm obsessed, but I'm just applying this to my outer corner and then my inner corner and I'm bringing it kind of high on the inner corner. The next color we're taking is Cheese Dust. These names are so funny to me. I know they're just personal representations of Shane, but like they're so funny. And I am going to apply a little bit of pigment again to get that pink to show through. I know it's looking kind of interesting right now. This is just what happens when I was playing with color. Next, we are taking Not A Fact. This, by the way, is the most amazing brush. This is from Refer. It's the P07E, but I think this is a prototype name. So I'm not sure of the actual name, but it's perfect and we are going to just work on building this color so if you're using a blending brush like i am it really isn't going to pack on super dark like it does look in the pan but it is still packed with pigment as you can see i'm going to blend this in to the crease a little bit this color is very workable he has such a good formula and keep packing it and you can really build that depth okay and then we're gonna work on these edges a little bit add a little bit more of pigment then some cheese dust which cheese dust is a stunning formula i'm going to do this off camera because there's no way i'm going to be able to stay in focus but i'm taking my p louise base and i'm going to create just a cut crease really quick and I'll be right back. So just so you can see what it looks like, here's my cut crease. It's nothing crazy. I don't do crazy sharp cut creases, but it's just to get a bit of a blank space. And to me, this was one of the most eye-catching colors in the palette, Conspiracy, because I'm such a green lover. And I'm just going to apply this all over where I put the base down. Okay, so now we're going to work between Conspiracy and Not A Fact, which is the dark purple. We're going to work on blending these two shades together now. These shades are going to be difficult to blend together because they're not very close on the color wheel to each other. And they're both different formulas as well and finishes. So kind of work between patting the purple on and then using your finger to kind of push conspiracy over so to work with the formula we do have to push it over into the mat that's going to help okay and so now i'm gonna finish my face makeup and i will be right back so for the lower lash line i'm really only using this color because i hadn't used it yet we are gonna pop what's the t in the inner half of my lower lash line this also adds just like a really fun pop of blue honestly i really just wanted to use this color to see what i thought of the formula and i really can't tell from just applying it right here so just in case you're curious about that color, I need to play with it more. And then we're going to take pigment again, which is that pink. We're going to run that right along the lower lash line, leaving a little bit of space for that blue. And then we're going to take not a fact, that dark purple and deepen everything up. And while I'm at it, we're going to take ranch, which is that shimmery white in the corner. And we're going to just brighten this area up. I love this color. All right, so that's that. So I'm going to put on the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. All right, so here is the final look. Literally, all I did was put on mascara and lashes, nothing else. And this is how the look came out. And I am obsessed with it. I think it is absolutely stunning. All right, so... 
I think that kind of closes it up as far as this review goes. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I really hope you found it helpful and that it answered any questions that you had. If you do have any more, don't be afraid to comment them down below in the comment box and thank you for sticking around. Let me know if you got your hands on this palette and if you didn't and you don't want it, let me know why too. Always open for discussion. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, I do hope you take the time to do so. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys, have a good one.